Another media that perhaps has only got a limited lifespan left is optical discs, CD, DVD and Blu-ray. They all use lasers to etch and scan microscopic holes or bumps on the internal surface of the discs. And they all use a transparent layer that protects the surface that makes them resistant to minor scratches. You can see that the capacity of these devices has gone up over the years. 640 and then 700 megabytes for CD, just under 5 gigabytes for DVD and up to 50 gigabytes for Blu-ray discs. And they all follow roughly this basic pattern. They have the bottom layer here is a, uh, a hard layer basically that just protects the disc, protects the read-write surface. Above that, and B is a shiny layer that reflects the laser. And data is encoded in that layer in pits and bumps in the reflective layer. On the other side of that we have an extra layer to protect the other side of the reflective layer. And then on top of that we may have some artwork or imagery or text or just a, a label area on the top of the disk. Data is read from and written to by means of a laser beam. So for a CD for example will have a red laser beam that reads a CD and is reflected back to a sensor which converts the, the light that's reflected back into electronic data. CD, DVD and Blu-ray all use a spiral track with constant track size. So the data spirals out from the centre of the disc. And with the principle that the smaller the wavelength of the light the more tracks can be packed onto the disc because you're able to pick up smaller and smaller bumps. You're able to detect smaller bumps if with a smaller wavelength of light. Blue light has the shortest wavelength out of red and blue. And so where CD and DVD used red lasers, the blue lasers and, and Blu-ray are able to encode and detect data in much smaller areas. Both DVD and Blu-ray have a, what's called a dual layer format which allows lasers to focus onto one of two layers on the same side of a disc which effectively doubles the possible capacity. Optical media also has a number of read-write formats. It uses a special die layer before the reflective layer. It can have pits burned into it by the writer. But the write drives can produce a higher power beams that mark, melt or distort the die layer. And there are lots of different disc formats for optical media, such as write once formats, plus or minus R. So those are discs that you can write to, but once they've been written to it, you can't change the content. And rewritable disc formats. The die can decay, which would affect the lifespan of the disc, but modern discs should last anywhere from tens to hundreds of years. But an uh, effective backup policy is always important. But modern media is moving away from a whole range of different disc formats and increasingly moving to things like flash storage. We can see a wide range of different flash cards and USB memory sticks here, all placed next to for comparison a portable hard drive. And capacities have really grown significantly. So some of the devices here have a 60 megabyte SD card next to a 1 gigabyte memory stick pro next to some USB sticks. And USB sticks of this size may now typically have 2, 4 or 8 gigabytes and higher capacity devices are available. By comparison, this hard disk has got 64 gigabytes. It's now possible to buy USB sticks with larger capacity than that. So we can see some of the typical capacities again here. So what's flash memory? Again, it uses transistors, but unlike normal DRAM, there's a we have an extra insulated connection and an additional gate that can actually store the charge for a long period of time, for years. 
and that allows Flash RAM to store data without power. An issue with Flash RAM though is that individual memory cells do memory cells fail over time. This is called memory wear. Anywhere between 100,000 to 1 million program erase cycles, so program is when you put data in, erase is when you clear it. So after 100,000 write, read writes, or up to a million rewrites of data that's on your flash device, you may start to experience memory loss. To try and limit the effect of this, most flash devices use something called wear levelling and memory block management to extend the lifetime. What this means is that if you save a file on a memory flash memory stick, you edit the file and save it again, it will probably actually save it somewhere else on the flash memory so that it won't wear out the same memory locations. Using flash as cache memory for your computer or using flash memory for compiling on can cause serious damage quite rapidly because when you compile programs you do lots of read write operations and over a period of time you might be surprised how quickly you can really affect the flash memory just by using it as a as a disk when you're actually compiling projects regularly. And there's a wide range of speeds and lifetimes of flash memory and costs. So you will see bargain flash memory with high capacities for low prices and often that will actually be flash memory a much lower speed rating and it may not offer as good a lifetime as some more expensive flash memory. Solid state drives are quite a relatively recent in innovation and introduction and they use RAM as hard disk. Usually flash memory, DRAM solid state drives are possible but these would need to constantly powered. Higher performance and cost in normal disk drives but lower capacity, but also with lower power use, so good for laptops. Memory wear is still an issue, can be paired up with a normal hard drive, where for example you place primarily the operating system files into the SSD, so it's got a very fast boot up and start up time, but user files and memory cache may be in the hard disk. So some comparison of SSD versus HD, SSD will spin up instantly, there's no spin up time, there's nothing to spin. Seek time will be incredibly low because it actually knows where the data is. Latency, effectively low. Fragmentation, well data will be fragmented in SSD but it won't have any effect. Typical transfer rates for SSD and HD though are often quite similar in range. But by having no effect of the fragmentation, by reducing all the different uh, latencies, SSDs can operate much, much faster. You can also get some performance SSDs with much higher transfer rates. And the cost is the kicker, with SSDs currently costing around about a pound per gigabyte and each hard drives costing a fraction of that. Which brings us to the cost versus speed comparison for these different devices, where DRAM is clearly the most expensive, it's the peak of the blue line, but is the fastest, it's got the low, it's got the fastest seek time in milliseconds shown here. Flash is still pretty expensive and pretty fast but not as fast as flash. Hard disks getting pretty cheap now but there's a much bigger speed delay. Tape, cheap as chips, very slow. And you note that this scale here is logarithmic. So for DRAM we're in fractions of a millisecond of seek time and we get up to <clears throat> hard drives, we may be up to some number of milliseconds, maybe 10 milliseconds, and we get up to tape, we're certainly in tens of thousands of milliseconds.